everybody, I'm Titania Dioxide, and today we are playing 100 Days on the Carpe Noctum Minecraft server. Carpe Noctum is a private, vanilla plus Minecraft server. We just started our fourth season, and I wanted to bring you along for the ride. I'll let you know our server's quirks as we go, so let's get started. On day one, we start at the spawn. Before the server opened, the build team set up this area, and my god was it worth it. I pick up a few early game crops from the community garden, and head northwest, towards the area I picked up. So I can survive on my way there, I start punching the trees like you do at the start of any new world. But unlike most worlds, Carpe Noctum has some limited teleport capabilities. My base mate Tiki has already made it to our lake and has rescued me with a quick teleport. And look at this lovely area. We have a lake with an island in it and a village right nearby. With Tiki having set up the sugarcane farm, I plant the crops I picked up earlier. And watch a squid die. I swear I don't know how they expect to survive. And of course, my amazing choice of base made in question, as the admins threatened to kick Tiki for speedrunning. Just give my it like a week. My speedrun is already botched. Give it like a week. <laughs> Let me just slash kick Tiki. <laughs> oh. Slash ban Tiki. <laughs> On day two, I finally managed to update my tools to stone and start chasing some fish. The only reasonable food stores in our area right now. Unfortunately, as we start day three, I get a bit ambitious with my fish hunting, and my first step is drowning via salmon. Whoops, not getting those items back. Take two, punch trees, new pick, new stone tools, and a salmon head to boot. Regardless, as day three ends, I start laying out a spot for our mine and picking up some more salmon, much more safely this time. I spend day four searching around our area. I take note of a ravine with a mine shaft, and I claim some items from a ruined portal. One of these golden apples will go to Tiki. Looking at where I've explored, I'm considering extending our lake into a 200 block long river to connect with this lake. That's a project for later, though. And I spend the rest of day 4 and 5 collecting fish for food. On day 6, I recognize the need for charcoal on the next 7 days chopping trees. Two things. One, our server has fast leaf decay. That's why the leaves fall so fast. Two, you may have noticed that there wasn't really any game audio so far. That was a recording mistake. That's going to keep being a thing, unfortunately. And the next section is going to be a replay model. This episode and the next are a bit scuffed with tech issues, but I promise it'll get better as we go on. Anyway, back to day 12. On day 12, Tiki sends an urgent cry for help. And off I go, wrangling sheep and cows into a contained area. This will definitely help our food situation. On day 13, I decide I've had enough of mindlessly chopping down trees. It's time for me to mindlessly break rock where we marked out our mine. It only takes about two days to get to the iron level, level 16, and I get to making the staircase a little more comfortable. I've decided that I need to make a little base of operation, so I dig out a room to work in and promptly dig a 15 block deep hole with only iron tools. So the entire purpose of this hole is to make a place for a giant spruce to grow underground. That spruce will provide wood to become charcoal, fueling our furnace array over here. Still, it took until day 26 to get the hole completed. On day 27, I'm ready to get exploring. After a couple days digging around, I have no clue where I am. A quick dig up fixes that, but I decide I'm probably better off the surface until I get my bearings. So my bearings I will get. Thanks to my mega tree chopping session earlier, I have plenty of spruce to get started on my starter home. The design for our build is inspired by the Avatar The Last Airbender episode, The Painted Lake. It takes place in a river town with open air stores and houses designed for good airflow. The house I'm building is on stilts to avoid seasonal flooding. The front porch is a fairly public walkway, and the walls are made of fences to allow a breeze through. The original show had thatched roofs on their houses, but I didn't really like the idea of a roof made of hay, so I used slabs on top of a fence to make a breezy feeling roof that still seemed like it was structural. There's still some finishing touches it needs, doors and windows for example, and better lighting, but a couple of server members dropped by on day 37 with approval and feedback. I may try replacing some of the fences with moss, but for now, with a bed, some chests, and a campfire kitchen, I'd call this a starter house. Satisfied with my home, I move back to trees for days 38 through 40. On day 41, I figure it's probably time for me to get some proper armor. And it only took a day to die. But on day 43, I find enough iron to armor myself, quickly check out a geode, and then head home. 
day 44 is the start of my next building project. It's tough to get around around our area, so I decided to make a pathway around the lake. That actually takes around 14 days, and we cross the day 50 mark while we're building, but the end result is definitely worth the time it took. Much easier to get around, and we have a couple of nice spots to set up to build in. My building itch satisfied, I head back to the mines on day 59. As I'm digging for iron, I managed to find some diamonds. A nice big blob of them. And I actually found what I think is an iron vein. But I'm entirely out of food, so I head back to the surface. Tiki's been hard at work, so I've spent days 63 to 66 in the village, checking out his farm before going back to killing salmon. And I head back down to the mines on day 67. I found the vein I spotted before. Too bad it's just some iron next to some top. On day 72, as I keep exploring, I spot something. Moldy beans. Raw copper blocks only spawn in copper veins, which means I must have hit the jackpot. Nope. Yes, it's probably a vein, but I seem to be at the very end of it, and the trail of it fizzles out immediately. I pick up every copper ore that I see on the way back to make up for it. It takes 10 days to get home. On day 85, I show Crow my tree set up in the mine, and we get up to some shenanigans. But after they leave, I take stock, and I realize something. I have enough diamonds to get two picks and an enchanting table. With my first diamond pick in hand, I collect the necessary obsidian and head up to the surface to make the enchanter. I leave it for Tiki to see the next time he's online. It's a new day for me in real life and a new opportunity to rise to game. Mira needs some help with her villager career, so I TP over to help her out. <laughs> they made hearts. They made hearts, but but I'm like I've been here for like five hours. So uh, well, I'm a villager now. <laughs> <clears throat> Mira, I, br I messed up. You can just break your way out of there. <gasps> there's a baby. Yeah, there's oh a baby. My God. What? <laughs> what did you do? What's the difference? <laughs> you know, that's just villages in a nutshell. Ah, no! Rip. So you want to know what I bet? Yeah. Villagers' inventories weren't full enough. But I've literally like thrown so many potatoes to them. As I said, that's just villages in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah, basically. Oh my god, what are you making here? I am making a mountain where there is gonna be a fort on the top. Nice, nice, uh, nice. And I'm gonna empty all this out of dirt and like possibly take it all the way down to bedrock, but maybe only some of it. Oh my god. Uh, it's it's looks like a place from Naruto. That's my that's my inspiration. Nice. Hey, yes. could I possibly trade you for ah. birch? Yeah, sure. Uh, give me a second. Yeah, Let me just grab some uh, saplings. Uh, do you want? Oh, thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah! What? Oh! Get the shit. Out. <laughs> I like those perfectly cut streams because you might cut it out. Oh my god! I you already have diamond tools. Tree. Yeah, my brother's full of diamond armor. So, uh, boom. Alrighty, that should be enough to get me started. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, thanks for the help. Now I can actually get villagers. I've just Gladly. been waiting and like trying to figure them out and like googling. There's another baby! <gasps> another baby! Go down! All well, right. uh, have fun. Good luck. Thank <laughs> you, thank you. I will see all y'all later. Yeah, bye, bye bye. Bye. After I head home, I take the opportunity of a free moment to check out a pillager outpost nearby. Other than its chests, I decide it's not worth it to stick around. But on the way back, I see some pigs and some chickens. We don't have those yet. I eliminated a trader earlier, so I actually have weeds. Plus, I have both seeds and carrots. This'll be easy. This was not easy. I get home on day 88, just about ready to strangle these digital animals. But with Tiki's help, we wrangle them into cages. I decide to split off the sheep and cows from each other and end up with a bunch of extra leather. With that leather, we have enough leather for 14 bookshelves. I head back to the cow pen, breed up some cows, and pull them again. 
And with that, on day 92, we have our 15 bookshelves for our level 30 enchanting setup. Starting on day 93, Tiki and I get building. We wanted a sort of lighthouse or tower by the river with our enchanting setup. Tiki spent the past few days chopping up trees and dismantling geodes, so we have plenty of materials. We start with a sort of spindly geode of our own in the center, with a levitating enchanting table and bookshelves supported by the amethyst. As I'm working on getting the second floor started on day 95, Tiki has to head out. I have five days left, and no plan. I try a few different concepts as I go, and despite my best efforts, on day 100 I have failed to finish our enchanting tower. But despite technically being out of time, I keep going. And on day 104, this is what we've got done. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not super happy with it. The idea of the second floor was that we'd have clerics up there, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to hold them well. I'm also not so sure about the fences and trap doors. But I spent three hours straight on this freestyling, so this is what we've got. Overall though, I'd say it was a pretty successful 104 days of Minecraft. We're geared up in full iron, we have an enchanting setup and a starter base, and Tiki's got some farms started in the village. We still have a lot to do in this world, but I'd say it's a pretty good start. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!